Jim was a Llewellyn setter, uh, which is a kind of an English setter. And uh, they're actually pretty famous hunting dogs, particularly quail, that was especially. Besides being able to do what his uh, owner told him to do and being able to predict the future and that kind of thing. Yeah, you heard that right. Jim was not your average bird dog. He was special. Well, the first one he found out he could uh, understand what he was saying. He was out in the woods one day, and this is the famous story that everybody tells. That he was hunting, he was tired, and he said, Jim, let's go sit under the hickory tree. And Jim went over and sat under the hickory tree, and he noticed that. And he thought it was probably just a coincidence. And he said, well, Jim, is there an oak tree here? And Jim went over and sat under the oak tree. And I said, boy, Jim knows his trees. And I didn't know anything else. And there was a stump over there. He said, Jim, uh, is there a stump here? He went over and sat by the stump. And there was an old rusty tin can. And he said, Jim, is there a tin can here? And he went over and pound the tin can. Of course, Sam Van Arsdale at that point got real excited because he didn't realize Jim could understand all that thing. So he uh, loaded him back in the car and took him back into town to tell his wife Pearl all about it. And when he did, his wife said, don't tell anybody, they think we're crazy. So of course he did. He told everybody he could find then after that. But the uh, big difference with Jim, he could predict the future. And they found that out one day when a man was in the hotel and he said, uh, can your dog tell me whether my wife's gonna have a boy baby or a girl baby? And uh, Sam said he didn't know if he could do that or not. So he laid a couple of pieces of paper down on the floor. One said boy, one said girl. And Jim picked the boy and turned out to be right. And so that's when they start having him predict other things like the World Series and uh, the uh, Kentucky Derby and political elections and those kinds of things. And so uh, after Jim picked the winner and had a sealed envelope, they put it in a safe so nobody could see it until after it was over and they'd pull the envelope out of the safe and it'd be the right one each time. Jim continued captivating his audiences for six years until he died at the age of 12 in 1937. When Jim died, uh, he died in Sedalia, actually, and was brought back up here by Sam. And uh, the Van Arsdale had a family plot out at Ridge Park Cemetery, and they wanted to bury Jim there, because he was like a member of their family. He slept with them, went everywhere they did. He never was out of their sight. Well, the people who ran the cemetery said, no, you can't put a dog in a people cemetery. So he ended up uh, looking around. And he found somebody that owned a piece of land right next to the cemetery, so he buried Jim right next to the cemetery. Well, Jim got the last laugh about that because a few years later they expanded the cemetery and now Jim's in with the people. There's always flowers and coins and different things on it and uh, they, uh, they say it's the most visited grave out there. Next to the Jim the Wonder Dog Museum and Marshall's Visitor Center, on the very spot of the old rough hotel where Jim once lived, sits a statue of this famous canine, surrounded by a beautiful memorial garden. The uh, park was started in 1999, and really the, the, the big thing about the park is it tells the story of Jim the Wonder Dog in different stations as you walk around the, the parkway, and it takes it in order from the time he was born up to the time he died. We work closely with the Marshall Chamber of Commerce in promoting uh, Jim the Wonder Dog and Marshall in Saline County. One of the slogans we have is, come, sit, stay, and the other one is, smart dog, nice folks of Marshall and those kind of work together with a lot of the literature that's being put out by the chamber. And so we think that's important to the community uh, economically and just to keep his memory alive and be an important part of uh, the Marshall community. The Nicholas Beasley Company was formed in 1921 by Russell B. Nicholas and Howard H. Beasley. Returning home after World War I with an enthusiastic interest in aviation, these two young men with almost no capital, but a fortune in business vision, developed an enterprise that would include the manufacturing of airplanes of their own design, an airplane parts catalog business, and the operation of a civilian flying school. <laughs>